Hey everybody, it's Marking Bad, and it's time for Chapter 2 in Replying to Reasonable Questions for Anti-SJWs, featuring Chris Yossity's questions. I am deeply concerned with male addiction rates, suicide rates, and abuse rates, because I have worked with these issues in the quote-unquote real world. Would you be willing as anti-feminists to put aside your differences with feminists for the greater good of addressing these issues, especially as the kind of solutions needed are not necessarily gendered? And if so, I would actually like you to let me know, because I'm not fucking around or presenting any gotchas here. I actually really think that we could get something done if we work together. So, yeah. To begin with, Chrissyosity, I don't consider myself anti-feminist. I consider myself non-feminist. And that is a subtle but important difference, at least to me. And I do talk with numerous egalitarian feminists about a lot of the issues you bring up. But a lot of everyday coffeehouse feminists are either unwilling to or unable to acknowledge that domestic violence, as an example, is not a gendered issue. But if you look at the case of Canada, women have 627 domestic violence shelters and men have two with a total of 16 beds. And according to 2014 statistics, men are actually the majority of self-reported victims. And if you look even more specifically at the case of Alberta, we have a nonprofit organization called the Alberta Council for Women's Shelters, which still uses an explicitly first-generation Duluth model, and it positions men as the sole perpetrators of domestic violence and women as the sole victims. One of the major arguments that I see in many of your videos is that it is possible to separate criticism of the religion of Islam from the actual Muslim people. And yet, this line seems to be crossed very often. I see things like raghead or camel fucker or other things like that in your comment sections. I see people taking very serious shots at Muslims in videos and hangouts, and they don't get called out. At least not that I can see. So my question is this, why should a person of conscience who is concerned about the Muslim people and their community not being harmed or mistreated, why should they believe that you're actually only attempting to look at the ideas and talk about the ideas if you ignore bigotry that's occurring right in front of you? And in that light, would you be willing to break bread and salt with moderate Muslim people on your videos, have hangouts, in invite them to your channels, just in order to build some bridges there and to learn more about what they think and how they feel and what their experience has been so that information and knowledge can be furthered. When I criticize Islam, Chrissyosity, and it's not frequent that I do, I typically leave such criticisms for Focus Break, Based Mama, or Skeptic Rose. When I do criticize it, I highlight material in the Quran and the Hadiths, which is used to rationalize and justify absolutely horrendous behavior that, in my opinion, has no place in a Western society. If people want a culture that punishes rape victims for reporting the crimes against them, considers genital mutilation and honor killings acceptable, has sex that openly advocate murder or forced conversion of non-adherents, murders members of the LGBTQ plus community, and uses a language in which black and slave are interchangeable terms, or that considers slavery any kind of an acceptable practice, well, they can stay in Islamic countries, in my opinion. I mean, frankly, if Islam was really a religion of peace, the Middle East wouldn't have been a war-torn shithole for the last 1400 years. You often say that you are for equality of opportunity, but if people of color, for instance, have to overcome barriers whites do not, such as discrimination and unequal treatment as are well documented in various studies, then how can the current situation be thought of as equal opportunity in any real way? And why do you consider it racist to discuss these issues? You haven't offered any particular examples of discrimination that people of color are being forced to face, Christiosity. But in my response to the one janitor, I did address a number of the negative outcomes that are plaguing socioeconomically depressed communities. And yes, within the context of the United States, that does include black communities, although it is certainly not limited to black communities. However, minorities in pretty much every Western country that I'm aware of have access to programs like Affirmative Action, which permit them access to higher education and employment simply by dint of being a visible minority. To me, using programs like Affirmative Action as a crutch for visible minorities is, to some extent, a bigotry of low expectations, and it's throwing a bone to those minorities as though they are fundamentally incapable of success under their own power. And to answer the final element of your question, I don't consider discussing the issue of alleged discrimination inherently a racist discussion. 
I consider the implication that I am inherently racist for the happenstance of my heritable characteristics as though those characteristics prohibit me or inhibit me from having a valid opinion or prevent me from discussing the matter. Well, frankly, I do find that a little bit racist. And while I think this question was more geared towards the alt-right, a question's a question. And that wraps up answering the reasonable questions of Chrisiosity to anti-SJWs. If you have questions, concerns, comments, or inexplicable hatred, use the comment section below or find me on Facebook and Twitter. Or don't. I'm here for my validation and not for yours.